I just remember the, the tenant giving me that first thousand dollar check. And I was like, I can't believe this. Like, is that it? Like, is that simple? Hello, welcome to episode 195 of the Smart Agents Podcast. As always, my name is Michael Walter and I'll be your host. On today's episode, we are joined by Ray Glimp, full-time real estate investor. As you'll hear from Ray, he twice found himself homeless early in life and has used that experience as a driving force to the success of owning over 100 doors. Emphasizing the importance of hard work and determination to overcome challenges, Ray discusses his criteria for investing in properties and what type of neighborhoods offer the best cash flow opportunities. He also highlights the value of building relationships with real estate agents and the benefits of working with investors. But before we get on to the day's featured interview, the Smart Agents Magazine is available and full of insights and strategies designed to help real estate agents grow their businesses. Inside, you'll find interviews and advice from leading real estate professionals, marketing tips to flood your business with leads, and even swipe and deploy files full of practical tools to enhance your business. Be sure to click the link in the episode description to claim a free digital issue. Also, if you enjoy this conversation, be sure to like and subscribe. The Smart Agents podcast streams on all major podcasting platforms such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, and of course, YouTube. And finally, if you or someone else on your team has an incredible story or real estate tips to share with our community, send us a message to feedback at smartagents.com. We're always on the lookout for new stories to share. All right, let's get on to the day's featured interview with Ray Glimp. If you're interested in learning more about real estate investing, check out his website at rglimp.com. Well, really, the way I like to start everything out is if you could just introduce yourself to us a little bit, who you are, and uh, you know, a brief backstory about yourself. Um, so my name is Ray Glimp. I, uh, I'm originally from New York City. Um, I live in uh, Morgantown, West Virginia now. Um, I'm a real estate, full-time real estate investor. I have over 100 doors, um, mainly investing in West Virginia, Pittsburgh, and Ohio markets. And um, you know, my story is homeless to over a hundred. So, you know, I, humble beginnings. I, you know, I wasn't fed with a silver spoon, very humble beginnings. And I worked my way up to where I am now. Right. So if you don't mind, tell me, um, you know, a little bit about, you know, that transformation and, you know, a, how you, how you found yourself in the homeless situation. And then what was it that kind of sparked you, uh, to become, you know, a real estate investor? Well, uh, you know, the homelessness happened actually twice in my life. One was, uh, you know, being in New York City uh, after September 11th, my dad lost his job. And uh, my family, we come from a family of hard workers, but there was nothing he could do at the time. My mom couldn't really do much. And uh, they lost their job. We, were, we went to a homeless shelter. I think I was about, you know, 11, 12, 13, somewhere around that age. And uh, I still remember spending my birthday in a homeless shelter. And I told myself, you know, all my belongings were in this, you know, black garbage bag. And I told myself, I'll do whatever it takes to make sure that I never end up here as an adult and that my kids never have to go through this. And, uh, you know, I worked my butt off in between that. And my second, you know, time actually being homeless was when I moved to West Virginia, I slept on my cousin's couch. So I was couch crashing um, because I didn't really have any money, but I knew I had an opportunity to do something better. And I came here originally for school and uh, actually started my entrepreneurial journey from there. But um uh, you know, being homeless twice in your life, it, it's kind of the bottom of the bottom of not having your own place. So it, it, it creates a different mentality for some. You know, with your experience with the homelessness, I have to imagine that that has been, you know, something that because you've experienced it, you know, has been a big driving factor in always, you know, wanting to, um, you know, find success and then, you know, uh, push yourself forward. Oh, for sure. You know, um, just not wanting to be at the bottom. Like I said, it's a different mindset of, you know, failure. So I got my first job. I remember when I was about like 15 or 16, it was under the table job, but I learned so much from it. But, you know, the biggest thing it taught me was hard work and um, what hard work actually was and what it looked like and what I needed to do to to be successful. And um, like I said, I never wanted to go to that step of, of being homeless again. So I worked my butt off just to get, you know, sometimes just to make ends meet. Yeah. What was it that, uh, you know, initially sparked your interest in real estate investing and, and how did you kind of get that bug? Well, so eventually I became an entrepreneur. I started to make a little bit of money, um, but, you know, I was trading my time for money. So I was working 50, 60. I owned bars and restaurants at that time. I got into that that field of life and, you know, it, it was nightlife. And I I was working every night. It's hard to have a relationship or hard to have a family or, you know, true friends 
when you're always the one working behind the scenes. So at that point, you know, I was sacrificing trading time for money and it, it was just, I knew it was time. I, I got in a, a bar. I remember I was in a bar with a group of guys. It was about eight guys. There was some restaurant owners, attorneys, um, some guys in politics, doctor. And uh, they were all just talking about real estate. They're like, yeah, we could, you know, buy this property, all put in 5,000, renovate it, refinance it. And, you know, you know, uh, 1031. And I was like, man, I have no idea what these guys are talking about, <laughs> but it sounds like a great plan. And then I still remember to this day when I went back to everybody, I said, hey, look, you know, the money's here. Are you guys ready to do this? Everybody backed up. Not one person was willing to invest in real estate. And at that point, I had, you know, I already had done the groundwork. I had started to learn about the ins and outs of real estate. So I took a swing at it. And uh, the first property I purchased was like it was in the slums. It was a bad property. I would I wouldn't buy that property today, but I paid like twenty five thousand for it, actually. And uh, I renovated it. I think I spent about another twenty, twenty five thousand and it cash flowed a thousand dollars a month. And at that point, I was like, man, I think I got something. I don't have to cook anything. I don't have to clean anything. I just got my first check. This is amazing. And, you know, and I gave somebody housing. So this is great. And uh, at that point, I knew I wanted to duplicate. Yeah. What, um, you know, I am really interested in the fact that you you kind of you taught yourself and you, you really kind of did the you did the work yourself to learn the ins and outs of real estate investing. What were some of the uh, the tools and materials that you were consuming to uh, kind of build up that knowledge base. You want to know something? I didn't have anything at the time, which is unfortunate. I, I would have went a lot further, a lot faster if I had the tools. If you know, if there were podcasts out there, there weren't podcasts when I when I first got started. There was no you know bigger pockets, or there wasn't any Instagram or YouTube influencers out there. So a lot of the stuff I was doing, I just learned on my own. I had to read, you know, I read some books. Of course, everybody points to you know Rich Dad Poor Dad. You know, there's a uh, Ken McElroy's ABCs of, of investing, real estate investing. Um, so, you know, having those resources around were helpful, but I didn't really know anything. I didn't have any mentors. Um, so it, it was really like learn a hard way on your own. Yeah. When you, so when you purchased that first property and you got that first check, what, uh, how did that kind of transform things into where you started buying more properties and, and how did that path end up shaping out? I just remember that the tenant giving me that first thousand dollar check. And I was like, I can't believe this. Like, is that it? Like, is that simple? And then they paid again the next month and the next month after. And I say, you know what? I need to duplicate this. So at that point, I found another $25,000 property in Pittsburgh. It was in a better area. This was like a C minus area, but better than the F that I had first bought. And uh, same numbers, actually 25,000. I spent another 25,000 renovation and it cash flowed a thousand dollars a month. And at that point, I'm, I said, you know, if I can get to, I call it my freedom number, if I can get to enough cash flow a month, I could retire. And at that point in my career, it just looked like 100,000, 120,000 a year. You know, that would be like my retiring number. And uh, my first big asset, multifamily building that I purchased was that that freedom. Yeah. What um, and you've you've mentioned it a couple times the uh, the different uh, classes you know the grades of the uh, the properties that you buy you know now that you've done this uh, for so long and you have all these properties under your belt what's your kind of criteria uh, for you specifically and what you share with other uh, investors to uh, you know maybe they're looking to get into real estate investing what they should be looking at yeah so I would say stay away from the f's those are like the bad crime crime ridden areas you're more than likely your door's gonna get broken in crime's high uh broken windows which we did have at you know that that first unit high tenant turnover which we did have at that first unit it's just not an area people want to live you know uh bad school system uh lack of transportation lack of you know grocery uh options um and then we also try to stay out of the a neighborhoods per se too because those are just a lot harder to cash flow. You know, um, so like your high end areas, typically, unless you have the cash flow or the, the extra residual income, it's really not a good idea for beginning investors. I like to stay right in between the, you know, the B and C area. And I have some A class in my property, but the B and C's are my sweet spot for cash flow. Right. When you, um, you know, and when you're looking at these properties, um, how much work uh, are you looking to to put in to do renovations or is that it's I have to imagine that all goes into the formula on when you're deciding if this is going to be a, a wise decision or not? Yeah. So I always 
a reverse engineer when I buy a property. One, I'm looking at every reason why not to buy it. I think that's the most important for me at this point in my career, why I shouldn't buy this property. And then the exit strategy. So am I gonna if I'm gonna fix a flip, you know, I need my numbers to be at a certain amount. If I'm gonna buy and hold this property, you know, I gotta make sure that it, it can cash flow and that the market supports the cash flow spectrum. Um, you know, so I'm always going into it with what whatever the exit strategy is, most important. Um, and then if, if the numbers make sense, then I'll buy based on the numbers. But I'm always buying based on numbers, never on this building looks great or this house looks great. It's always numbers based. Right. And I think that's a really good point to make is, you know, have that, you know, having that exit strategy, first and foremost, what, you know, what's the goal with this property? And then you can decide if it's, you know, if the numbers line up. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you have to know your numbers and anybody in real estate to tell you, you you're going to fail if you don't know your numbers. Right. It's so easy, especially in today's interest rates, climate. You can see, I mean, there's people going underwater just because they, they weren't expecting um, interest rates to get high. You know, um, so you have to know your numbers and be comfortable with what may come. Right. So the majority of our audience uh, is real estate agents and brokers themselves. And I have to imagine over the course of your career doing this, you've you've worked with a lot of agents and, you, you know, you've worked with a lot of people in the industry. What are some tips um, or, you know, just advice for agents that are looking to work with investors? What are some things that they can do to, um, you know, market themselves better or, uh, you know, uh, just kind of get them you know, have a, have a better uh, experience for you. Yeah. So I think again, it, it becomes knowing your numbers. I get a ton of agents that try to send deals that don't make sense for cash flow or don't make sense for a fix or flip. So even agents should know their numbers going into it before, you know, they send it to the right people and, and you know, having the right people lined up as well, knowing like, Hey, this guy likes to fix and flip. So this property might be better for him or this guy likes to buy and hold. So this property might be better for him or her. Um, so one, that's the first thing. Number two, I think, is don't be transactional. And I know some people listening might hear this. Um, there are a lot of agents that are transactional. They they get the deal done and that's it. You you know, build a relationship. I think that's the biggest point in, in real estate is about relationships. You know, so building a relationship, the, you know, the agents that I've done deals with continuously are the ones that I have a great relationship with. You know, not only do they send me deals. But we have a good relationship. So it's more than just, OK, it's a, it's a transaction done. I made a couple thousand off this guy. Never see him again. Um, go in with the mindset of, you know, I'm building a relationship. I want to build rapport, integrity. And um, from there, you can you can definitely build a, a, a great footing. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's, you know, especially working with an investor like yourself, if you're looking to uh, to make a mark in a specific community, I mean, that agent if that whole the building that relationship and having that you know solid rapport is only going to help them in the long run. Yeah, look at investors as your I mean your easiest way to close the deal, right? So if a deal comes up, you know you might have to do ten showings, eight showings, where if you can have an investor, they may be able to go in and do you know look at it one time and say, hey, I want this, you know, and I'll take it as is. I mean, most investors we can we can close a lot quicker than you know your average day retail person. Typically, I can close them depending on what the deal is anywhere from five to 30 days. You know, we can buy things. We can skip inspection if we need to just to get you to the end game. So as a realtor, I look at investors. I would look at investors as like this is like it makes my job easy almost, you know. And and for me, it's a pleasure to work with realtors because as an investor, sometimes it makes my job easier. You know, um, communicating with, for example, title attorneys or communicating with the, the lenders Sometimes the agents will do that, you know, and as an investor, I'm not used to that. So it, for me, it's like a breath of fresh air to not have to worry about that constantly. Um, so, you know, again, make it a relationship instead of just a transaction. Yeah. One of the things I also noticed, um, you know, in some of your videos and things is you're, you know, looking for, um, you know, the, the properties that, that could use a little help. You're, you're wanting to build up the community now. Is that something that's changed over the course of your career? No, no. So, I mean, for every investor and savvy investors, we're always looking to do, you know, a value add or buy in the right neighborhood and help fix the neighborhood. Um, and as an investor, my, my, main, my main thing is to help people at the end of the day, right? We're helping solve a problem. So if there's a, you know, ugly house on a block, how does that hurt everyone else's house? You know, how does that hurt your value? How does that, you know, you might have rodents coming into that house now all of a sudden. Then you you take on rodents from your house because of this one house. So 
um, as an investor, it's in, it's in my best interest to try to help, you know, get, get people to the end game. And even as a uh, realtor, it's, it's in the best interest of everybody to help, you know, get these, get this community term, whatever community you, you may be in, in or be invested in, you want to help the community at the end of the day. So that, that part of my journey has never shifted. If I could buy in a, a decent neighborhood or a good neighborhood and help fix a problem house or a problem area, I'd love to. You talk about giving somebody, um, you know, providing somebody with with a home and, and somewhere to live. What's that? What's what's that part been like uh, for you, as to have these tenants come in and you know uh, make a home out of some of your properties? Oh, it's, it's heartwarming, man. Because I, like I said, I still remember when we were homeless and living in a homeless shelter. I, I remember the, the the roaches in the building, and we come from a very clean family. You know, I remember the rats. We had rats in the walls, and I, I could just think, man, I can't believe people live like this. Like. This isn't a home. And right now I'm able to provide people a home, you know, quality living. You know, you know, when we go in, we renovate these places just like we would on any market. Um, and you know, renting them out to a program such as, you know, a section eight or a HUD housing or something like that. Um, I'm very involved with those programs and helping people who may have similar circumstances, providing them a home that they can call their own has such value. One of the big things you're doing now is uh, a lot of is coaching and teaching people how to invest now. How did that, you know, how did that start up and, and why is that something that you wanted to share with, uh, you know, the community? Well, yeah, it actually, I, you know, on my, on my journey, I was, you know, purchasing, buying housing, buying units. And uh, I went to a conference about two, three years ago and I just started talking to people and they were, um, you know, just asking, Hey, you know, what, how are you invested? Have you started investing? And most people were like, no, I haven't started. And this was a big conference. This was over 2,500 people. And I think the average person, I think of like 50 percent were looking to just get started. I think another like 40 percent maybe had one unit. And then I think the rest might have had two. And there were probably a couple with like maybe two to ten. And at that point, I, you know, as I was talking to people and I even started listening to the keynote speakers and it, it became like maybe I have something here more than just, you know, uh, you know, just what I thought I took for granted, because for me, I was just working. I had it had been ingrained in me all my life just to work and work. And uh, I finally, you know, just like looked up and was like, man, like I really do have something here. And, you know, at that conference, I, a lot of people reached out and like, hey, look, I love to get to, you know, your scale or, you know, what systems did you put in play? And so the, the questions I started answering became somewhat redundant to the point I say, you know, I should put together a program to help people and help educate them on some of the basic things. Um, in real estate that they may be missing. You know, a lot of people I notice teach you how to buy, but not a lot of people teach you how to manage, right? And buying is one of the smallest parts of real estate, actually. You know, it's the management. And to, you know, even, you know, realtors, some realtors get into property management. Brokers get into property management. You know, the managing is the bigger aspect of owning a property. So I think it's very important that people understand, like, not just the buy aspect, but the actual management of the asset itself. Right. Absolutely. And it, that brings up, a, you know, it ties that into one of the videos that, uh, you showed about, you know, doing the um, I think it was the lawn maintenance on one of the particular properties. I think the, the quote was like what, $150 <laughs> and it ended up being eight, eight minutes of work for you. Yeah. So I think that's, you know, understanding that part of it as well. You know, don't get yourself into a hole for something that you could knock out yourself. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm still a hard worker to this day, no matter how much money I have or how many units or. I will still go out there and do the work because I like to understand every facet of business. And I think any successful business owner, realtor, a broker, they will understand every aspect of the business. You know, there are a lot of realtors out there that may not own a home. So they may have, they may not understand the shopping process of actually buying a home and how untransactional it actually is. It is a relationship. You choose a particular broker, most of the, or broker or realtor based on a relationship. You know, this is somebody that you're trusting to help guide you to one of the biggest purchases of your life. So understanding every facet of the business is ultra important. Yeah. What, um, you know, what's it been like teaching people how to uh, start investing for themselves and build up their portfolios and, and really kind of help walk them through the same journey that you started out doing? Um, the biggest thing I say is joy. Um, you know, seeing them develop from, you know, that retail mindset, because there is a different mindset. Um, and to, you know, the realtors, listen, there's a different mindset between somebody who's a retail buyer versus an investor. And that retail buyer is buying because they like 
the finishes and, and they like, you know, the flooring and, and it's such a beautiful home. Whereas the investor is looking at, hey, does this number make sense? That is it. A true investor is looking at, hey, does this number make sense? Is this area a good area? Um, will there be appreciation in the future? It's all numbers based for an investor where, you know, the retail side is based on like looks and emotion. And so seeing people transition from looks and emotion to understanding the numbers. And then because at the end of the day, you want to produce something because, you know, housing becomes a product. You want to produce a product that's also affordable to some extent that people can live in, you know. So understanding that has been a, tr a tremendous joy and helping other people see that as well has been very helpful to, to those in the community. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I know a lot of times when I talk to uh, agents, you know, we talk about the the first time home buyer and, you know, creating that generational wealth within your family. But then if you take that a step further and you start investing in your own property, that's really, you know, setting your family up for that generational wealth down the line. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, if, if, if we look at it right now, I think we're going through the biggest time shift that we've seen, you know, the, the boomers are, are aging out right now. And now this is, it's the time to buy. This is the next like gold rush in real estate. And we look at the people buying real estate right now, the companies, the corporations, you know, you have uh, BlackRock, you know, you have State Street, you know, these are the biggest corporations. They're buying real estate and they're buying it for a reason, right? If this is generational wealth right now, if you want to hedge the dollar, you want to hedge inflation, real estate's one of the best investments and it always has been. Tell me a little bit about, you know, as the market has shifted over the last few years, how has, um, the investing side of it changed over the years. Is there, you know, obviously with the the rates and everything changing, that's one thing you have to keep in mind. Uh, but is there even um, a shift in the buyer or the, you know, the renter demographic that you're looking for that even the, you know, the properties that you're looking for? Yeah. So I think it changes for everybody, right? Because we are creating what they call a renter nation, right? Um, affordable housing is just like a thing of the past. It won't be affordable. We can't build affordable with high interest rates. It's, it's, kind of like an oxymoron. So, um, you know, to, to actually get to, you know, affordable housing, we need lower rates. Um, so the actual tenant themselves we're seeing are transitioning more to, we've seen higher section eight and HUD numbers than I think I've seen ever. Right. Um, we are, I know in my particular area and areas I invest in, we are, we have a high demand, um, for places. I have a 0% vacancy rate right now. Um, and so I'm on a I'm on a path of building and developing right now just to help house more people. Um, so higher interest rates don't really help anybody. It doesn't help the buyer right now um, because then it becomes an affordability pro uh, crisis for, you know, the everyday buyer, which means prices have to come down if if they want. But most people are locked in at cheap rates. So why would I sell? So the only reason to sell is based on need. And at that point, I might as well rent out the asset. And, and turn into a true asset. Right. Yeah, absolutely. What, um, you know, I noticed also that, uh, you know, you share your uh, motivational messages, you know, throughout the community. What's that been like just, you know, to, to share that, you know, that daily motivation and to get people, uh, you know, moving in whatever right direction it is for their life. Maybe it's, you know, maybe it's not necessarily real estate investing, but just, you know, putting themselves on the path uh, to success. What's, you know, what's that been like to do in your community? Um, I think, I think it's necessary. You know, <clears throat> a lot of times, especially like on social media, we hear of all the good stuff, right? And it's, it's almost a disservice to share all the good stuff. And the piece of me, I like to share the real stuff. You know, every day in real estate is not easy. Every day in my life is not easy. I may have it better than some. I may have it better than most, but not every day is easy. We all go through our own hardships. So hopefully it's something that someone out there can relate to. Maybe they're going through their own hardship. You know, how can and I, I just try to be as relatable as possible? How can I help you and whatever you have going on? Um, these are my everyday struggles. What are your struggles? How can I help you? You know, in the end game. At, at one point, you know, like I said, I went through struggles. I had no idea. I, what I was going to be in the future. You know, I was sleeping on the couch. What is, what is my next move? You know? Um, and so being able to now be able to show people like, Hey, look, I've been there before and I'm still working as just as hard as if I, I could be there tomorrow. You know, and that is a, a part of life that a lot of people need to understand. Social media is, is it's, it could be disastrous and toxic to a certain extent because all we see is the good man. And, uh, 
a lot of people that that I follow now, they show the real. And I think more people need to see the real in the real in real estate, too. And, and even think about it. We see agents. Right. And, and we see a lot of agents and we you look at like million dollar listings. And guess what? The average agent, I think, in the first like three to six months, sells zero houses. Right. So wh- wh- who's giving out the real? You need to hit a real before, you know, it, it, you might hang your license if you don't sell anything in the first three months. You might give up. You did all that hard work. And you might give up, but you need to persevere. You need to push through. There needs to be people showing you like, hey, first three months, sold nothing. Next month, I, I made $1,000 and then no more money after that. But I'm going to keep trying and I want to show you guys exactly step by step what it's like. Yeah, absolutely. I definitely agree. You know, the social media aspect of things uh, can definitely give you a false sense of uh, how, you know, how an industry works or how, you know, a certain lifestyle is. I mean, I know several several agents that you see the real flashy Instagram reels, uh, their day to day is not anywhere close to that. No. And most of them shoot in the same, they shoot in the same day. Right. And, and they, they might rent the car, borrow the car for a week and then, then go shoot. They're selling you a lifestyle at the end of the day, they're selling you something. And what is it they're selling? Right. So they're selling you a lifestyle and you need to understand that that lifestyle might just not be what they are. Right. That might be who they want to be, but it's not who they are. I, and, that's why on social media, if you ever see me, if you guys follow me on social media, you always see my day to day. I go to project sites. I go to job sites. I'm not pulling up on a Lamborghini or Ferrari. I, I drive a Tesla. It's a nicer car, I guess, but it gets me from A to B. And I don't have to pay for gas. That's why I drive it. Um, but it's just part of the day to day lifestyle of what a real estate investor does. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think, you know, today, I think you had a, a video uh, inside one of the projects going on. It looked like uh, all the walls had been uh, gutted out and you were doing some work in there. Yeah, I mean, that's every day. Today, I, I went to uh, visit the project. Some guys are finishing up some brickwork outside. I went to check on them. Then I went inside uh, to, to another project and made sure that, you know, the, the contractors were there doing actual work. And then I continue about my day. I come, I do paperwork. I get plenty of time to relax. I can show you the relaxation time all day. <laughs> You know, but the, the, the truth is, like, nobody cares about your money except for you. Nobody cares about your project except for you. So you need to be the one actually doing the work. And if you're not, you're going to fall behind. Right. And, and you know, we we talk about this a lot. Of, you know, I do Instagram lives a, a lot. And we talk about there are so many contractors that scam you. You know, there are so many. Nobody cares about your project. Nobody. It literally has to be you or, or, or you could even hire somebody to care about it. Hopefully you paid them enough that they cared about it as much as you, but nobody cares as much as you do. Yeah. Uh, before we wrap up, uh, tell people where they can find, um, you know, uh, find more about, you know, the, the coaching that you're doing and, um, you know, the real estate advice and the, the tips that you're giving out. Yeah. You guys, the easiest way to find me is Instagram, Ray, R-A-Y, Glimp, G-L-Y-M-P-H. Easiest way, just send me a DM. If I don't follow you, send me a DM. I'll follow you back. I just, I get a lot of spam mail, so I want to make sure you're a real person. Send me a DM. I'll follow you back. Um, if you don't have Instagram, www.rglimp.com, R-G-L-Y-M-P-H.com. Um, just drop me a message. Send me an email. I'm a real person, guys. I, I respond to every DM that I get. I uh, respond to every message, email that I get. So um, I love to connect real estate, um, whether you're an agent, broker, investor. It's all about connections. I'm here to connect with people just like every people should connect with everyone else. I want to thank Ray for joining us today. And I think his story and approach to real estate investing is really inspiring. Remember, if you'd like to learn more about real estate investing, be sure to check out his website at rglymph.com. So once again, if you think you or someone else on your team has an incredible story or real estate tips to share with our community, send us a message to feedback at smartagents.com. Well, that wraps things up for this episode. But remember, follow the show wherever you listen to podcasts and make sure to subscribe to the Smart Agents YouTube channel. Again, I'm Michael Walter, and we'll see you on the next episode.